Right, 26 March 2021, and today I want to look at a very, very interesting story that came out from a newspaper called Newsvox this week, and it got picked up by a lot of other international newspapers, including South African newspapers here. And this story is about Bonam Gabe and her husband, Simbach Kore. So I've been wanting to look at this story for a very, very long time because this story shows everything that is wrong about Zimbabwe, why our country is not progressing, why we are not developing as a nation, and why people continue to laugh at our country. This is very, very sad. So I want to show you the house that we're going to be talking about here. It's a mansion. This is the biggest house in Zimbabwe by far. I think even Philip Chiangwa's house is not as big as this house. So this house that you're watching here is the house that Bona and Simba have been building. And this house has got approximately 27 rooms. It also has an apartment in the basement. So if you look at the way this house was built and the cost, you understand the magnitude of looting that Mugabe was undertaking when he was in office. And this house basically costs $39 million. And if you translate that amount into runs, it's over half a billion runs for this house. The reason why this house costs that much is because of the preparation that had to be done on this land before this house could be built. So I'm going to show you the stand where this house is built. The stand is bigger than the Harare Botanical Gardens. I'm sure I'm correct. If Harare Gardens or Harare Botanical, I don't know which one is which, the one that is at the city, in the city center. The stand where this house is built, you can see here, this is just the portion near the house. If you look further, this is the complete land where this house is built. So let me remove this banner so that you can see better. So all that area that is circulated in red, that is the stand of this house. And the roads on the sides have been specifically constructed by Bona and the husband. So this is not the roads that were there. They were constructed, and these roads are more than a kilometer long on both sides. So if you're traveling from the left, if you're traveling from the right, you, you travel separately. I'm sure that is a one way which is going to this house. Now let's look at the features of the house. And this house is in a suburb called, or in this mansion, in fact, is in a suburb called Umsundel, and it has 25 bedrooms. So as I said, the, the house, the land in which it is built is more than 21 hectares, which is bigger than the Harari Gardens. And originally it was set to cost $39 million, which is more than half a billion rand. You can just imagine how much, how many houses you could have built with half a billion rand. Many projects in South Africa housing projects don't even get to that size but this is how much they spend on this house Mugabe was funding the construction before he died and he asked Bona and Simba to reduce the cost because the house was just too expensive they had to dig deep into the mountain so I just want to show you again how they did dig into the mountain they dug deep into that mountain and there was granite. You remember there was a big story when they started building here that there was a, a big granite uh, base or, or, or rock rock base that they had to get rid of before they started building this house. The basement is 1,200 square meters and it has nine bedrooms and an apartment. The ground floor is 3,000 square meters. It's got eight rooms. The first floor has got 3,000 square meters, it's got eight rooms, and the first floor, and the deck, sorry, has got 600 square meters. 
They also plan to put a swimming pool, which is going to be massive. And as I said, there are going to be roads that stretch for over one kilometer on both sides. And then there's also the landscaping costs, the builder's costs, the engineer's costs, the, the, the cost of the architects. And this is going to be totally out of hand. So far, I understand they've spent 20 million and they need another 20 million to finish the house, which they're now failing to find because obviously Mugabe passed away. So let me quickly conclude. And what I wanted to say is that this is a terrible waste of money. If these guys had built houses for $30,000, they would have built more than 1,000 houses as a project. Alternatively, they could have used this money to build hotels. We could easily have had two hotels in Harare, two nice hotels, like the ones that we have here in South Africa, hotels like Garden Court. They do not even have more than 30 rooms, 40 rooms, those hotels. And these guys are building all these big houses, these big mansions. I'm totally against them because they've got no commercial value. If you build a mansion with 40 bedrooms, there is nothing you can do with that house. It's a useless house. They're just building it to show off, but there's nothing that you can do with that house. Then I also look at them, Gabi family. I think they're now heading towards bankruptcy as a whole family. And within the next 10 years, I will not be surprised if most of the investments that they did are completely lost and they have nothing left. This is a very, very embarrassing uh, story, especially for the Mugabe family. The amount of looting that has taken place here is shocking. Look at that house and look at the land that the daughter has got. Imagine what the mother has got if the daughter has got this. It is shocking. And th this kind of, of behavior within government circles, this is what is causing Zimbabwe to be where it is today. If someone is a property like this, they do not care about developing the country. They are living the life that no one else is living. Even here in South Africa, there is no one with a house that costs half a billion rand. It's shocking. So I, I think let us quickly look at the comments and then we'll end this discussion. I'll be back tomorrow. I've got a very, very interesting guest. I know no one is expecting that guest. We'll be having that guest tomorrow. So let me quickly look at the comments that we have here. Right, let's look at God Ola Owen. Ah, Gambaku Iwewe. It's a waste of time listening to you. Right, God, let me tell you something. If you don't listen, listen to me, who are you going to listen to? You better just get used to it. Let's see. Um, Maritz Rabiwana Bobo Izo. I agree with you. Mugabe was looting at a scale that we, we are yet to understand. Because a $30 million house, that is unheard of. And then Morgan is saying, where are they staying now? Simba is actually staying at that house. When the journalists went, they found him there, the Newswalk journalists. They found him there, and he tried to chase them, but he failed. But he is living on that property. I would be surprised if they've got a cottage on the property. I think so. I don't think they've got anyone else when they're in Zimbabwe. But obviously, the whole family is based here in South Africa. Grace spends most of her time in South Africa. news <laughs> That's very funny. Rafael Sarion Alfiato. Okay, let me tell you, my house is suitable for me. Uh, I'm sure I'm doing quite well compared to most people. Yes, I know you, if you are like Grace and a family, you probably have a, a, a bathroom that looks bigger than most of our houses, all of us Zimbabweans. Uh, Mona Lisa Choko Mende, Pasina Monzora. Okay, let's go deeper. Uh, must talk these properties.
to government. I agree. These kind of properties, if people like Bona cannot show where they got this money, I think the government should take them back. Here in South Africa, there's something called the asset forfeiture unit. If you steal, they are going to take everything that, that you have. And Bushiri knows all about it. They have taken everything that he has. Now, let's look at Lazarus Mpo, very responsible for Gabi's behavior in all aspects, leaving Zimbabweans as destitute. I feel very sad when I see this because just this, this one house, we could have a housing project which will cover civil servants, 1,000 senior civil servants. I'm not talking about junior here. Middle income houses for $50,000, you could have built 1,000 of them with the money that was used here by Mugabe and his family, this is pure looting and it's not acceptable. I do not know how we can stop this behavior in Zimbabwe government. People have to do something. Dorothy, Dori, Simba, Arugaramo, Ndewupi, Simba, Wacho, Simba, Chikore. You must go and read the story on Newshawk. They found him there and he tried to chase them. Right, Northern Rhodesian, Southern Rhodesian. Kambapwe, Kumishakwako ne Kupi. Right, let me tell you about Kumishakwangu. If you go to, if you're driving to Mutare, right? You're coming from Masingo. You pass Nyika Growth Point. After that, you drive about 50 kilometers towards Bejin of Bridge. You are now in the land of Gambakwe. Our great-grandfather the great Gambakwe, that was his land, and that is Kumshakwangu. And the Gambakwe family is, in fact, the Gambakwe name is well known because it's a royal family. That's why you see us, we use the name Gambakwe. So do not be cheated by anyone who, who, does, who tells you that Gambakwe is anything else. So Northern Rhodesian, I hope, Northern Rhodesian, Southern Rhodesian, I hope you got a better understanding of who Gambakwe is. In fact, I went to school in the village and I only went to town when I was in grade seven. So I'm a very, very raw boy who grew up in the villages. And I, I certainly don't have a house like this, which is embarrassing and I saw and a sign of serious looting by the Mugabe family, which they are now failing to complete because it's unreasonable and no one should have a house that costs $39 million in Zimbabwe. So I think let's end it at that very point. I do not see any other new... <laughs> Comrade Masuku, you say you thought I was in Debele. Of course, I went to NAST, and it was my job to learn Debele when I was in, 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 in Matwelland. I was studying computer science at the National University of Science and Technology. That's where I learned to speak in Debele. I also went to a school called Intuta uh, Primary School for my grade seven. So obviously, I, I really tried very hard to learn Sindebele. And the Ndebele people are also my people. So yeah, that is it. I'm not Ndebele by, by birth, but I, I consider myself to be very close to Ndebele people. In fact, when we were at NAST, there were about four guys who could speak Ndebele in my class. The whole NAST, all the guys were from Harare. And I, I was obviously very, very close to the guys that were speaking in Debele because I could speak in Debele and most of the guys could not. Right, let us end it here. And today I want to leave you listening to the music of Zim PF. I will try to give you the oldies, the golden oldies from the 2018 election. Thank you very much. And I'll be back tomorrow, as I said, with a very, very interesting guest that you do not expect. So let us see each other tomorrow again. And then Sunday, we're going to be having Chief Soshe if he confirms from the MDC Hyatt.
Vamos